Now McLennan has black and gold trunks with a lot of red showing. His trunks are falling off. And you can't you can't mistake the two. There's, <laughs> there's tape all over one foot, so you can't worry about that. But I agree. Should should be two different color trunks. Oh, nice right hand. Great right hand. I got through the. Uh, the defense of Virgil McClendon. Right between there. It is again, right between the two gloves. Right right again. Between there. And to his credit, though, you see, Millet just keeps throwing. He's just, McClendon's looking to close the gap and get inside. And on the way in, right, right. Millet's making Come him back. pay. And when he's on the outside, he's paying. He is winning the fight by just making sure he, the punches are there. And he's Punch landing at will. Right. Come back. Come back. Now he's just measuring McClendon out with the left jab. Waiting to unload the right. Final Don't minute of the 10th round. Yeah, work to get out of there. For the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. Great, great. Watch your head. They're on the left. First title defense, 21 1 and 1 with 16 knockouts. His lone defeat in 1995 against current champion Shambay Mitchell. A first round TKO. McClendon, the challenger, 21 and 1 with just eight knockouts. His first world title shot. Once again, flicking the jab was Millett and then landing with the right. These are pitter pat shots by McClendon doing nothing. Keep working, keep working. Don't hold him. Break, step back, step back. The great Angelo Dundee was taught by Chicky Fern. And what Chicky used to say, your left hand's a paintbrush. Paint his face. Just figure out, paint his face with that paintbrush. That's what well, right now the champion's stroking well. Yeah, he, he has painted them all kind of colors. Black and blue, most of them. And he's making McClendon look like a Picasso. Yeah, he is really powerful. Time. <laughs> Waiting in the wings, James Page, the WBA welterweight champion, who is next up against Freddie Pendleton. We take you backstage. Page out of the Bay Area near Oakland, California, the city of Pittsburgh. Looks rather... Uh, Relaxed and cool. He is still one of boxing's best kept secrets despite his uh, spectacular one punch knockout of Andre Pestriov in the second round for the vacant title. Intends to box more from this point on in spite of his success as a heavy hitter. Up next, Page versus Pendleton. You got six minutes to get busy. Six minutes. Every round is your last dude. round. You got to go two here. Got oh, you behind. Come on. You go way behind. Come you got to get busy. He just touched you. you every He's time behind. you hurt him. Every time you hurt him, yeah, you look like you started yeah, running yeah, from him. Don't run from him, so don't run to the left, to the left. Get that right hand off. All right, round 11. And a fight being commanded by the champion, Teron Millette, whose back is to you. Millette has tattoos of both his daughters on each uh, upper arm. Mm. Straight right hand there that got through again by Teron Millette. Got a lot of the uh, gook on his face. First time I've seen that much speed on Millette since, since the beginning of three rounds. That, that will brisk, hard punches instead of pillow punches. Keep punching, don't And hold. you notice there on the way in, right, McClendon back, lands back, one or two back. and then stops against side. McClendon stops. Dead stop. Champion keeps punching. And, and grabs him. I mean, like, like he, he's gone that far, he grabs him instead of continues to punch. Now he's fighting what you call a survival fight. A fight. He's, he's surviving, but he's not winning. Oh, nice. Chris. Left hand right on the right. Every once in a while, he does come through, but doesn't follow it up. The right eye of McClendon now starting to close as well. Oh, he should. He's getting, he's, I mean, he must have eaten 200 jabs here. He should show some signs. The accumulation of Millet's punches taking uh, their toll on the challenger. You can see it right there. Like that, that jab, right on the same spot, like target practice for Let's him. And that was five of them. <laughs> oh, straight right hand that, that buckles oh. McClendon. Another right hand. Right? Millette looking to end it here in round 11. I'm right right look on the inside, he is ready to go. And a long way to go in the 11th round for McClendon. Millette pouring it on. I think the fatigue is set in here, Steve. Not so much the big shots as it is the number of shots. The cumulative effect has come to pass. It's the first time that I've seen him in trouble. I mean trouble. This is trouble with a capital T. If Millette had a lot in his gas tank, he knocks this guy out. 
The left continues to land with that big right hook and straight right hand. Richard Steele looking in very closely. Hunter, get out! Almost ironic that he hasn't stopped it, knowing his track record. Richard Steele gets some bad marks against him for one questionable call. And, you know, I really don't think, I think it's a little too harsh. Chavez Taylor, yeah. Way too hard. Under 30 seconds to go. Oh. Oh. Crushing blow there by Millett. McClendon stands right in. I'll give him points for heart. A good chin, too. He took a nice punch there, and he's tired. I guarantee he felt that. Punch, it out There's a right uppercut by Millett. Everything's back, landing. And McClendon doing all he can just to lean on the champion. Steele looking very hard at him. If he ever gets up against the ropes in trouble, Steele will stop this. And right before the bell, Millett lands again with a right hook to the jaw, and McClendon stumbles away. Big round for the champion, as if he needed it. Let's see if this even continues. Millett doing the job here, showing he's the champion, showing why he's the champion. He loves those punches and bunches. Again, with all the angles, he can muster up good power. You gotta make me know. You gotta let it all hang out, baby. We'll watch the champion at work. There's the right hand, there's the left uppercut. Another right hand. He's just, he's incessant. He doesn't want to stop. He wants to keep the punches coming. There's another right hand around the side. Kind of a modified sort of right hook. Even with his back to us as McClendon tries to close the gap, he fires a left hook and a right hand. He comes back again. Just doesn't stop punching. Always had something out there. Again, working behind that jab. He's used it so well for the past seven or eight of the past 11 rounds. McClendon has not been able to work with it. Relentless Let's attack go. by Teron Millette. Gazes over into the crowd and smiles. I don't think McClendon wants to come out here for the 12th round, even though he said he does. He's well, down inside. I don't know. All, all fighters, as Bobby will tell you, you got that inside of you. I, I can go one more. I can go one more. You know, it's only when you're just absolutely overpowered. Well, quick. He just seemed to have that dazed look sitting on the stool in his corner. Like, what am I doing? I guarantee you, when you get to the 11th round, you want to go one more. It's when you're in a real war, it's only the third round and you're having problems. <laughs> That's right. That's when you start to really rethink things. Yeah, at the end, you got you want to hear that last bell. You, you got this far, you want to hear it at the end. Well, let's see if he can do something. Does he have anything left? Millett, all he has to do is stay away. Shouldn't do anything stupid. Open himself up for a uh, big punch by McClendon. Yeah, but he shouldn't change anything. He should do exactly what got him here. Punch, 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 punch. As soon as he starts to do something different, he can get nailed. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Right to the bell. Well, he is keeping his distance well, there. He's jamming. Now he changed. He just switched his up. Oh, he yeah. changed. Why would he do that? Variety. Is he bored? <laughs> Don't get too cute, Teron. We got him to this big lead in his last round. Oh, a punch oh. punches. Well, he's trying to end it here. He's consistently been the one throwing more, more punches, landing more punches. Uh, this fight should be stopped. Right, yeah. back, this fight should be stopped right here. And Richard Steele uncharacteristically lets it go. He's going to stop it. There, he stops it. Finally. And a backflip by Teron Millette. That was impressive. Into a split. Into a full layup. <laughs> Big celebration. I give him a 9.8. A 9.8 in an international scale. Would have made Prince Nassim Hamed proud. So that's it. Teron Millette stops Virgil McClendon in the 12th. 150 unofficially. This one is history, and Teron think, Millett with his first title defense. I think that was a wear down as much as a knockdown. I mean, you know, he just wore him out. I mean, it was just a continuous shower of punches, and it was well stopped. Well stopped by Richard Steele. And let me say, before we leave that subject, any good fight that I would have either fighter on, I'd be happy to have Richard Steele as a referee. He is top. Sorry, baby. It's all right. You ain't nothing. And you said that just as he wrote it out for you, too. Just the same way. Hey, take this, my man. All right, Teron Millett. What is that voice in the background? Anybody? I believe that would be uh, Don King Productions. Oh, I see. What's that? Normandy track team. Don is, is hollering at a guy who's got an admiral's hat on. Normandy represent. Well, he ups his record to 22-1-1 one one with 17 knockouts. 
McClendon goes to 21 and 2. Yeah! Oh, yeah, how about you? His title unification on the horizon. Hell no! Throughout the fight, McClendon could put the punches together, but here in the closing round, the champion closed the show well. Hooks and uppercuts on the inside, constantly punching, getting through. You can't block them all, you can't slip them all. McClendon, I think, was just beat as much by fatigue, but that fatigue was reinforced by Millette being so active. So many punches for McClendon to have to deal with. Body shots, never stayed off the body, kept the body work good. And again, at the end, you know, they're both tired. It doesn't take big shots now. He simply didn't have the answer, Bobby. He didn't have the answer for Millette. He just didn't know what to do with him. And well, by the end, I think McClendon was not only exhausted, but just totally, totally frustrated and yeah. without hope. They stopped it well. Well, what?